The strongest part of the tree is the trunk. So let's add custom trunk placers to Minecraft. Alright, we found this back in Telegram's Warren. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom trunk placer to Minecraft over here. Now, to be fair, I actually don't know if the strongest part of the tree is the trunk. But it does seem likely, right? So, uh, let's just see. So, last time, we have seen the custom tree basically being added. Both via the configured feature right here. And then via the place feature and biome modifiers. And now here, instead of using the straight trunk placer, we're going to be creating our own custom trunk placer, which is going to be just sort of, I'm going to nudge you in the right direction. We're going to register it. I'm going to sh basically show you how you can place down certain blocks. And then from there, you will have to take it. It will require some 3D thinking and thinking basically in 3D space on how you set down the blocks, but no worries at all. Let's just get started. So for this, in our tree package, I'm going to just make a new package called custom. And then we need two classes, one in the tree package. This is going to be the mod trunk placer types in this case. And then in the custom package, we're going to be creating the actual trunk placer. This is the pine trunk placer. And this is also the one we're going to start with. This will extends the trunk placer class right here. This one right here. And we're going to hover over this and implement the two methods. We're going to hover over this again, create constructor matching super. And that's actually going to be okay. For the type method, we want to make a deliberate error. The place trunk method, we're going to take a look at that in a second. First of all, we're going to register everything. And then the place trunk method is going to be basically created. In the pine trunk placer, we're also going to need a public static final codec of type pine trunk placer. We're going to call this the codec equal to a record codec builder dot create. You're going to just start typing in pine and you can see it basically creates this function for us. You just hit tab to autocomplete for the trunk placer ports method, passing in the pine trunk placer instance right here that was created. After the first closing parenthesis, we want to do dot apply and then just pass in the pine trunk placer instance again, comma, pine trunk placer colon colon new, end it with a semicolon and no errors should be present. With this done, we can now register it. And to register it, we of course need a deferred register. So there's going to be a public static final deferred register of a trunk placer type of type question mark. This is going to be our trunk underscore placers equal to a deferred register dot create registries dot trunk placer type tutorial mod on mod ID. And as always, of course, where there is a deferred register, we also want a public static void register method with an I event bus call event bus and call the trunk placer to for register dot create dot register passing in the event bus right here and there you go as always of course all of the code is available to you in the description below in the github repository and let's then also go mod trunk placer types dot register passing in the event bus over here in our tutorial mod class and with that the trunk placer class is done and now we just need to register our custom trunk placer so this is going to be a public static final registry object of type trunk placer type of type pine trunk placer. This is our pine underscore trunk underscore placer equal to trunk placer dot register. This is going to be named the pine underscore trunk underscore placer comma and then a new supplier of a new trunk placer type has passing in pine trunk placer dot codec. And there you go. All of a sudden everything done. And that is the registration of the trunk placer done. We can now go into the pine trunk placer again, return the proper type. So this is mod, mod trunk placers dot pine trunk placer dot get and with that the actual pine trunk placer is done the setting down of the blocks happens in the place trunk method but before we do that we also want to go to our configured feature right here and instead of a straight trunk placer we're going to choose a pine trunk placer right here no errors should be present and we can then proceed to the well most important and also most complicated method and that is the place trunk method what I highly recommend you do is once again, you click on trunk placer, press control H and take a look at all of the different vanilla ones. So for example, you're like, oh, how do I make a giant trunk placer? Well, you take a look at the place trunk over here and you can see this is how it works. Now, obviously you will need some Java knowledge for this. There is no way around it. You can take a look at it. This is really not that complicated, all things considered. But if you're like, I don't know what is happening here, then that is a good indication that maybe a little bit more Java knowledge is needed. But in general, the really what you're going to need here is just to be able to think a little bit in three dimensions. So this is where all the logic goes, right? This is where block placing logic goes. And the first thing we're always going to do is we want to call the set dirt add method, passing in p level, 
passing in the p block setter, passing in p random, and then the position at where this is going to be set, and the position should always be p pass dot below, and then passing in p config. This is the first thing that you will have to call, otherwise the block below the sapling basically is not going to be set at dirt, and you basically always want to set this to dirt, so this is what you're always going to do, and then you can play around with a lot of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play around with the height over here a little bit. So we're going to make a height. We're going to take the free tree height plus a p random dot next int passing in height random a and height random a plus three, for example, plus p random. And you can just do whatever you want over here. You don't have to do it exactly like I'm doing. You know, you can I mean, it really does not matter. Height and b plus one, something like that. Right. So it's like it's going to be a crazy random number over here in terms of the height so that all of our trees are going to have different heights as this method, of course, is going to be called once for every time your tree spawns. And then we basically just are going to use some for loops to place down some different logs. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to make a new normal for loop i equals zero. I is smaller than the height that we've defined over here and then i plus plus. And that's pretty much what we want to do. And then in there, we just want to place down a normal log basically going up. And the way that this is going to work, we're going to call the place log method. That's it. Passing in the p level, passing in p block setter, passing in p random, then the position. The position, of course, is going to be the position that the sapling is at dot above. And then by i, we're, we're going to increase it by i each time we are going through the for loop. So we're just going to go up until the height is basically reached. That's it. And then here, the p config. And there you go. That would already work and that would already create a custom tree. Now, in this case, it would literally just go up straight and do nothing really interesting. But that would be everything that we need. The place log method is one of the important, most important methods. But there's a few more caveats that we're going to see in just a second as well. And this return right here, this null, well, we of course need to return something. And that's, of course, going to be an immutable list here in this case, dot of... And this is going to be of a new foliage placer foliage attachment right here. We're just going to take one of them and that's going to be p pass dot above. And then we're going to pass in the height right here after the first closing parenthesis zero and then a false. And you can see the zero here is the radius offset and the double trunk is just whether or not you have a double trunk. So this list over here that we're returning is basically the list where every one of your foliage placers is going to place something. So that would, of course, mean if you would have like a branching tree, then you would have multiple times where your custom foliage would be placed and you would basically just pass in the position of that right here. Nothing too crazy. But this is actually already going to work and going to create a custom tree. Now, in this case, it's probably just going to create a pretty tall tree and that's it. But that's fine. You first of all want to run the data again, because remember, the configured feature right here has to be created via the JSON file, right? So this has to now change to a pine trunk placer. That is why you need to run the data if you change it right here. If we subsequently change the place trunk method over here, we do not have to rerun the data. You only have to do it once when you're basically changing the trunk placer right here. And with the run data done, we can now go into the game and see our custom trunk here for the first time. All right, fans, back in Minecraft and let's just build our tree right here. And you can see it is a very tall. It is definitely taller than the other ones. Uh, let's just like build one or two more just for the sake of argument. So you can see this one is actually, you know, like OK ish height. But because of the crazy randomness of the height that we've basically put into the place trunk method, there is like a bunch of different variants that you could expect. But that is the first step. And now what I want to do is basically just have some offshoots right here. So we're just going to have like a couple of branches, so to speak, coming off of this. And then from there, hopefully you will be able to build the tree of your dreams. Right. So to do this in this case, I will keep this as this is just going to place the logs, you know, down in the straight manner. And then we are going to have blocks that come off of it. And the way that this is going to work is I'm just going to say, hey, if I is divisible by two and that is equal to zero and also P random dot next Boolean is true. Right. We're going to just say basically have a 50 percent chance of spawning branches. And also we're only going to do that every second height here in this case. And then we can do some other random stuff. So, for example, we can say p random dot next float if that is bigger than 25, let's say. So we have a 75% chance of spawning a new branch here. And we can do another for loop here, right? So we're going to just do an int x equals to zero. And then we're going to go to, let's say, four. Right, so we're going to spawn four new blocks over here. And the way that we want to spawn them is actually with a custom value. So we're want, we want to rotate them into the direction that it's actually going to face. To do that, you don't want to use the place log method. You actually want to do p block setter. 
dot except passing in the position this is going to be above one right so this is going to be above and then passing in the i right here and then dot relative and the relative is going to be the direction that we're going to face this in so this is going to be direction dot north by the amount of x in this case then passing in function dot identity dot cast and casting this to a block state on the identity itself you want to hit the you want to call the apply method passing in pconfig dot trunk provider Let's format this a little bit differently. There you go. The trunk provider is going to do dot get state, p random, and p pause, and then set value of the rotated pillar block dot axis to the direction axis of z, I believe it is indeed. And now it's actually going to face the correct axis as well. So this is the way that you basically would change the axis of the trunk provider as well, so that it, you know, basically has a different block state in this case. And then we can just duplicate this four times. So you can see I want to duplicate the if statement over here and then change a few things. So in this case, we want to also do this in the south direction. That's amazing. And we can keep it like this. When we do it in the east direction, we of course want to change the axis here in this case, as we now want this to face the x axis and similar here, x axis for the west direction. And you basically are going to see what all of this does. So we can literally, after modifying this, just jump into the game again, and you will see that the trees are going to spawn with a little bit of randomness, and they're going to look a little bit weird, but let's take a look. All right, we're back in Minecraft again, and let's spawn our tree, and you will see. So this is what it looks like. It's definitely, um, well, I mean, maybe a little bit underwhelming over here. Uh, let's see. That is a huge variance, so you can basically see. This is the general idea of how it spawns and how it is planning to spawn. So you can basically see that you get offshoots over here. In this case of three length, we actually want to change this up a little bit to get them to four length and also to not change the middle block over here because you see that the middle block right there is like changed into a, another axis, which of course is not quite what I had in mind. But overall, you can see that this is the way to basically do a trunk placer. And once again, if you wanted to make a completely like custom one and you're like well i basically just want to build a tree and then you know from that i want to make a custom trunk placer or maybe you, what you can do is you can build like you know like two or three trees right here right so let's just like build a tree i'm, I'm not good at building trees but let's just say for the sake of argument right you're gonna build a tree like this and you're like okay this tree or maybe i don't know something like this there you go right i want this tree to spawn inside of the world right this is like one of my pine trees let's say that i want to spawn let's keep the leaves out of it for the time being because they are going to be a little bit more complicated but if you wanted to spawn something like this you can literally just call the place lock method just changing the position you're passing in and like explicitly saying okay this block is p position and then this block is p position dot above one p position dot above two right and then this would be this one would be if we're looking into what direction this is this is the north direction right so this would then be p position dot above two plus relative north one that's literally all you're doing and then you can lay basically like that you can build a tree that you have built like this you just have to basically note down what position you want to place those in and then it would spawn that particular tree now it would spawn that tree every time so what you could do is you could build like three or five or ten different variants quote unquote of the trees and just use the random method to select one of the different trees that you want to spawn and that would pretty much also get you some pretty cool custom trees but yeah, when it comes to the place trunk method, the best way to do this is to play around with this a crazy amount to, until you properly understand it, because that's pretty much the only way that you're going to make the custom tree that you want. But that is basically how to make a custom trunk placer in Minecraft. And that's going to conclude this video right here. In the next one right here, we're also going to tackle the custom foliage placers. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.